Hey hi fans, uh, welcome to this week's uh, SEO video. This week we're going to do an Ask Me Anything, which we haven't done for a long time, have we? No, it has been a while to be fair, so yeah, it's good to bring it back and thank you everyone to, that's sent over questions as well for us to, to answer. Yeah, and, and big shout out goes to Chad. Yes. gave us enough questions for about 15 videos. Yeah, <laughs> I should be wanted them back, so I just thought, give us yeah. as much content as possible. But no, no, we really appreciate it, and it, it gives us it gives us a lot of content that we can use. So thanks everyone, and um, yeah, when we do our next AMA, keep an eye out on the Facebook group, because um, we'll put out a post probably a few days before like we did this week. Awesome. So yeah, right. so um, same format as normal, if you haven't seen it before, I'll ask Andy a question, Andy will ask me a question, so on and so forth until we go through them all. So yep. first question is from Ashby. Um, does the arrangement of words in a keyword phrase make a big difference? For instance, if I can see the phrase online plus size boutique as a high search volume, would plus size online boutique have the same results? Okay, um, so it's just putting the words in a different order. Correct, yeah. So it only matters if the meaning of the phrase changes based on what order you put it in. And that only matters if Google thinks the meaning changes. So what I would do is I would, I would go to Google, I would search with those two different variations, and I'd have a look at the results. And if you see the results are fairly identical, which you will do if they mean the same thing, yeah. and which in this case I'd be very surprised if they don't, mm. then you know that, that they mean the same thing. So you can optimise for just for a single, for a single variant. Um, another way to check is to check the search volume for each one. So what Google does is now, they don't give you the search volume per individual phrase, individual phrase exactly as it's typed in Google, they group together similar ones. So if you see the search volume for variant 1 is 500, and then the search volume for variant 2 is 500, it's not that they're both getting 500 searches, it's that Google's grouped them together. So that's another way where you can know that they mean the same thing in Google's eyes, and you don't need to optimise for them separately. And then finally, um, you mentioned about you wanted to kind of front load plus size, so that's more around your business. Um, and then online boutique at the end. That makes sense. Um, if you can front load the most important parts of the keyword, um, Google always, when you optimize a page, you kind of want to get your keywords at the front. So yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. Awesome, sound good? Okay, so the next question is from Bob. Bob says, um, why is it I've ranked number one for a keyword that I've never used? Uh, we've tried to rank for auto service, wheel and tires, auto repair, but I rank for the word speed, even though I don't mention it anywhere. Awesome. So. Um, what you will find is that Google uh, will kind of make their own assumption as to what a page is, is referring to, or a website as a whole, um, what services you offer, um, what, what um, different services you offer, different keywords that you're potentially looking to optimize for. Um, now, you can add keywords into a page, but Google will make their own determination about what that page is optimized for um, on their own back. So you could be optimizing, as you say in here, Speed Shop Winnipeg. Um, so you're optimizing for auto surface wheels and tires, but you're actually showing for um, speed shop. Google's linked the two keywords and said, okay, um, this is what this business does. So this business is a speed shop, which I assume uh, from where you're based, it means the same thing as kind of auto service and auto repair, as far as yeah, where it that would makes be. Sense. So Google kind of understands that that's what your business does, but people search in so many different ways and so many different keywords and there'll be thousands of different keywords that you don't even know that you rank for that Google's showing you for because Google's linking them keywords. Um, so a good way to check this is Google Search Console. So have a look in Search Console. You can see what different keywords Google is showing your website for and showing pages on your website for. So obviously try and optimize for the phrases that you really want. Um, obviously in this case, auto service wheels and tires and auto repair. Try and optimize for them phrases, but don't be alarmed if Google just show you for other phrases or you do start to rank for other phrases. Um, it's just Google no, knows. Don't be alarmed. Be yeah. Happy. Yeah, well, it's a great thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing. Um, but it may be that the stuff that you're trying to optimize for that you're not ranking for at the minute is more competitive. Mm -hmm. And actually, the ones that you are showing for are less competitive, and that's why you're ranking for them, even though you don't necessarily want to be. Well, it's not a bad thing. No, it's not a bad thing at all. Yeah. Um, awesome, so the next question is from Tom. Um, under the bonnet of hype, there is a section under actions for AI. It comes up with loads of comments, but I'm unsure of how to improve the results. Is there any tools um, that you can use to check out content for AI? Yeah, so um, there's a video that um, we recorded probably a couple of months ago where we talk about um, tips on how to optimize your content based on those AI results, those Google AI results. So um, we'll link it to the video um, below. Yeah. Um, but the, the place where you check it is directly in Google. So you can go to Google 
and go to, um, I think it's Google Cloud, and you search for Natural Language API, you can update your text and check it there and you get the results live. We just use that API, but you can actually do it in real time. So that's where you should, um, where we'd recommend amending the content to see the results. But yeah, we'll link to the video and then you can see it from there. Awesome. Cool. So next question is from Ben Scott. Brilliant question. How will the coronavirus affect SEO? Awesome. So, um, yeah, nice and topical, at least. Uh, it, 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 in itself, it won't affect the way that Google SEO can't works. Get Google can't get affected with coronavirus. Um, so, <laughs> in, well, it's pretty powerful. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, in the way that Google works, it won't change because of coronavirus. So, in, in terms of the actual um, bits that you do for SEO for the website, that won't change. However, users' behaviour may change over time, um, and one of the, well, a couple of the areas that you may see this is. Um, if, say, for instance, you're getting traffic for certain keywords and maybe people aren't searching for them as much now because maybe it's for services, B2B services are going to be affected and more mm. than likely. Um, we were talking the other day uh, about kind of if businesses are potentially looking to um, make large changes, maybe brand new website and they're, they're potentially looking to spend a lot of money on a new website, that might not be the case. It might be put on hold until they can understand what's uh, what's happening. Mm. Because of that, you may find that search volumes for certain keywords may drop, um, or just traffic in general may drop because of that. So there's a couple of things you can do. Um, so we wouldn't say to optimize for coronavirus, but obviously people are gonna be doing different types of searches now that they weren't doing before. Yeah. How does coronavirus um, affect this industry? Or um, So have a look at how it may affect your industry, and maybe write some content around it um, of how it may affect and, and try and maybe target some searches around them sort of keywords. Mm -hmm. um, also, potentially, you might need to actually optimize now for more keywords because maybe you've got a, a store where you normally expect to have footfall, maybe that footfall may drop. So maybe you need to bring some of the products that you have in store online if you're mm -hmm. not already and start optimizing for them as well. So I suppose it's making the most out of um, the traffic that you're getting and maybe looking for additional opportunities where you can get more traffic um, to the website. Yeah, so SEO may become more important for businesses. Yeah. Yeah, because it's not a high street that can be affected by it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Um, Good answer. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Phil uh, has asked, is cannibalization a problem if the pages are all relevant for the query? Okay, so to understand this question, what I think um, the question is, let's say we're trying to optimize for um, SEO software and we create five pages that are all relevant for SEO software. Yeah. Um, is it a problem? I guess yes, in that case, if that's, if that's what you mean. Yes, because um, same as before with, with cannibalization, Google needs to choose which one of, of the five it needs to rank. Um, why not just create one brilliant mega page yeah. that's got it all on? Especially considering, so um, one change that Google's made over the years is you used to search for keywords and you'd get multiple results from the same domain. Amazon were amazing at this, yeah. Yelp. You'd search for a keyword, you'd get 10 results from Amazon. Um, Google took on a lot of user feedback saying they didn't, customers didn't always want to see the same domains. So they've, they've gone to quite big efforts yeah, over the last have. few years to reduce the number of domains on the first page so that each domain's only got one, res one uh, result. So if you've got five pages and you're like, well, I could rank all five, even if they're the five best pages out there, you're not going to rank all five. Google's only going to pick one because it tries to only choose one domain per front page. Yeah. So my advice, combine them all, make the, the super duper page um, and give yourself the best chance of ranking for that. Yeah. Yeah. Super duper page. Super duper page. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. So the next question is from Rob. Um, he says, once you have completed the research, then the controllable on-page SEO, what's next? Um, so off-site, essentially, off-page off SEO, off-site SEO. Um, basically things around kind of building authority to the website. So um, <coughs> activities around kind of link building. Um, if you're a local business, around kind of citations and maybe updating your Google My Business profile, making sure that's all kind of set up correctly. Um, with the on-site being kind of complete, uh, I would say that it's never fully complete in terms of if you get your website 100% perfect today, it may be that with changes, if you've got more than one person working in the business, new pages going up, new blog posts going up, don't think that kind of fixing the on-site today is gonna to then be perfect in six months time. Mm -hmm. Things change all the time, Google's recommendations change as well. So initially start with looking at um, off-site in terms of link building, um, so things like Harrow requests that we do quite a lot, um, citations, that sort of stuff. 
uh, content as well, so you can kind of get any kind of content put externally on news websites, that sort of thing. Uh, and then make sure you come back to your on-site afterwards. Don't leave the on-site um, because you've got it sorted now. Expand your SEO as well. So if you've gone out and you've built a load of links and you've built some good authority and you're doing well for your keywords, don't think that that's it. You can add more keywords. You can start to target more services, more products that you want to offer. Mm -hmm. Build out the website, build out more pages on the website, that sort of thing as well. So yeah, yeah. it's never a, kind of a done process as such, but it's definitely worthwhile kind of keep checking back. Yep. Awesome. Uh, last question is from Chad. So we, we chose the top question from Chad. We will go back through some of the additional questions that he asked and, and feature in future videos as well. Sure. Um, so the question was, do post titles have to have the keyword query in them? Yeah, so um, this is a really interesting question. Um, Chad actually posted yesterday on the group, I guess for a bit of context for people who didn't see Chad's post. Um, when go people go to Google and they ask a question, and the way you, you typically optimize for that is you create a blog post around that question and you've got a response. Um, Chad had an idea of actually just answering that question in the title. So I think the example was, when's the best time? If someone goes to Google and search, when's the best time of the year to travel to Japan? Um, he created a blog post with the title saying, the best time of year to travel to Japan is March, April. I can't remember exactly what it is. Um, so it's really interesting. Um, Google love to show answers. So do you have to have the keyword query, do, do the titles have to have the keyword query in them? Typically, no, I guess if it's synonymous or people, you know, if you've got yep. phrases a bit like the speech like at the end. Oh, yeah. But in this one, so for example, I went to Google and I searched um, what are the best trainers or what are the best TVs, um, where are the best places to live. Now, the actual um, results didn't have the what are, what are, where are, they, they were literally the best places to live, the best TVs. They were impartial results that then listed a lot of different answers, right? Yeah, so top 10 list, top so, 5 list. That's exactly, awesome. that's what Google says. They're not, they're not answering, they're not stating where are or what is. Yeah. They're just saying, here's the top ones. So, but they're not giving one answer, which I think is probably, potentially, I think it's a great test, um, but potentially could be an issue with um, giving one answer in your title and in the focus of your blog post. Because if Google deems the uh, search as being an intent as informational, so mm. the, quip, the customer's looking for information, Google likes to show impartial, non-biased uh, results, web pages, because the, the user can then choose which one they want. So they can make the mind up what's the best months to travel somewhere yeah. if you give a list of the different months which are good and for the different reasons. Um, yeah. That's typically the way that, that we'd advise to do it. But you know, keep us updated on how things are going with, uh, with your optimization on that. Yeah, I think if it's factual, Thing, you, it may be a bit of a different story. So if there's a factual answer, so I don't know how fast can the fastest car go, if there's a fa uh, factual answer of how quick that car can go, mm -hmm. then maybe they will show that one example. But if it's something that may be opinion based as to the best months mm -hmm. people go, um, then yeah. Yeah, well, it's like, so if I, I think I searched what are the best running trainers and it brought up an answer box and it was from a web page that said the best running trainers in 2020 and it had a list of like five top running trainers. So, I mean, it was, it, it narrowed it down to five, but it still gave the user um, five to look at and make their own mind up about. So, yeah, I think that's, that's a yeah. good point made there. Awesome. There you go. So, that's yeah, loads more questions from Chad, but like I said, we'll, we'll answer those in a different week. Perfect. And, yeah, keep an eye out on the Facebook group, the SAF for Startups Facebook group, um, and we'll put, put a post up normally Tuesday, Wednesday time if we're doing it uh, and ask me anything at the end of the week. Um, so keep your eyes out, and if you've got any questions, just drop a comment on there. Um, and yeah, we'll be back for another video next week. Yeah, um, another quick one. We've, if you are an agency, we've actually created another Facebook group as well called Hike SEO for Agencies. So if you run an agency or a consultant or you do SEO for clients and you want some help, um, we've created a Facebook group to help, um, help run that area as well. So search Hike SEO for Agencies. Awesome. All right, cool. Perfect. Have a good weekend all. Cheers. Cheers, bye.